So, you know, so often when I'm here and, and the worship here and the presence of the Holy Spirit, don't you just feel like it's enough? You could just go into groups or you could just go home and you have been filled. It's such a beautiful presence of the Lord here, and yet God has more for us, which is pretty incredible of our God. So I am so thankful to be here with you all tonight. This is truly one of my favorite spaces to be in, um, to be just among sisters who are falling more in love with Jesus every day, who are experiencing him in new ways. And then also to be among sisters who are holding each other up. I love how that word was spoken over us, that we are the extension of God's arms to each other. And you truly, we feel that in here. It's, it's just a beautiful place to be. But to stand here and say that this space is one of my favorite places to be is nothing short of a miracle. Because in my own abilities and my own strength, this whole thing would never happen. You out there and me here, it just wouldn't happen in my own abilities. But here is the truth, ladies. God works both in us and through us for a higher purpose, for the glory of his name. And he does things that are much higher than what our natural abilities could ever do. He loves us so very much. He has a purpose for us that is because of him, that is in him, and that is through him. And you know what? Anything that he calls you to do, from the smallest of little things that God asks you to the biggest things, he does not ask you to do it in your own ability. He promises that he is going to do it in his ability through you, which is a relief, a big, huge relief. So today I stand here only because the Spirit of the Lord has purposed within me and is working out of me a message to be shared for the glory of God's honor in his name. It's setting my own abilities aside and putting my full confidence in God in that he will do much more than I can do on my own. He is the giver of all things. So you know, I have been in Bible study all of my adult life. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, so that's a long time. Um, but this study, this experiencing God's study, has me so excited because, I mean, we're only through two chapters, but it's so rich in the Word and the ways of God, and yet it's so understandable, so it's, it gives us a new way to look at things that is very understandable, and I, I thank God for that. So this week, we find ourselves in our homework and tonight in our teaching in Unit 2, which is titled Looking to God. It's really a commissioning of sort, a calling to know and to do the will of God, a return to a God-centered way of living by way of laying ourselves down and our plans down by waiting and watching for where God is working and by responding to him through faith and obedience. As Pastor Charlene so beautifully explained last week, it's a tuning in of your spirit to his spirit and following where he's leading you. I like to say this way of living becomes a beautiful dance of worship. It's where your heart beats with the very heart of God and your inhale and your exhale goes to his rhythm of his breath and his lungs. And when we live with the Lord in this way, our heart's response becomes one that says, yes, God, I see what you're doing. I trust you. I may not understand you and your ways right now, I don't know what you're doing, but I trust you and I will wait for the work that you're going to do and watch for the work that you're already doing. Yes, Lord, I will join you. So I just wanna say a prayer for us tonight. Oh, Father God, I just thank you, Lord, that you don't call us to do anything in our own ability but you infuse us with your ability, a power that comes from the blood of the cross and the Holy Spirit that you have gifted us. 
I thank you, Father, for opportunities that we have to be used for your glory and your name. And Lord, tonight I humble myself and surrender to you and your plan, and I just pray that your Holy Spirit would come and be the teacher, that you would fill our hearts and fill our minds with your love and your knowledge. In your name we pray, amen. So if you know me at all, maybe you follow me on social media, Just talk to me for 10 minutes, and you will quickly find out that I am smitten in love with a tiny human being. (laughs) It's the truth. She is our first granddaughter, Alice Clara, first first baby, first grandbaby of this family, and there's all boys in our family before her, so I love boys, but she's pretty special. Um, And as her Grammy... It is my absolute delight to watch her grow and to develop. She is a risk-taking, music-loving, funny little bundle of cuteness. I just want to eat her all up. Um, But when I watch her and and watch her develop, I love to celebrate every single milestone. You kind of go a little bit crazy with that. The first time she lifted her head, her very first smile, the first time that she like recognized me when I came in the door and held her hands out to me. I mean, be still a Grammy's heart, right? And even now at 11 months, watching her toddle around with her very first steps, learning how to walk. So as her grandma and as an early childhood professional, I know that one of the most impactful ways that we can help our children to thrive is by teaching their parents, by teaching their caregivers to become watchers of them, to watch what they're doing and to join them in the work of their developing. So God has designed our brain in an amazing way that he gives us what's called windows of opportunity. This is the time when our brain is like wide open for the most optimal growth in a specific area of development. And the best way to see what area of development that is at the time is to simply watch, to observe a child and to know like they're walking. So you give them opportunities to walk. They're crawling. So you give them opportunities to crawl. They're starting to look at books, so you provide books. You give them what they need and you encourage them in that new work of developing. Isn't that the way with our God? I believe in the same way our children are designed to thrive by us becoming watchers of them. God has designed us to become watchers of him and thrive in him. So our first scripture tonight is Psalm 121, verse 8, which I believe you're going to have up on your screen. It says, the Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Just as a parent watches over a child, so our Father watches over us. He knows intimately our life's rhythms, our comings and our goings. He sees what you're dealing with. He knows what you're going through. He cares about your heart. There's not one thing that goes by that our Father does not watch over and see. And he invites us to become watchers of him, listeners of his spirit, joining him in the wonder of his work. God gives us windows of opportunity, where in the fullness of his time, he creates transformational change both in us and through us and around us. But let's be honest. In this day and age, this watching and this listening is becoming increasingly more difficult. We live in a world that really beckons us to listen to anything but the truth of God. That is why, ladies, it is so critical, it is so vital that we know God intimately through his word, that we are developing a deeper and deeper relationship with our Father, and that we are in sync with his spirit so that we're able to discern the truth when it's held up against what the world wants us to believe. We can be in sync with a lot of things these days, but being in sync with the Spirit is what God is calling us to do. 
So as we read in our study this week on page 39, circumstances do not always indicate a clear direction from God. Open and closed doors do not always indicate God's guidance. Rather, it's being certain that prayer, the scriptures, and the circumstances agree on the direction that you sense God is leading you to. In Deuteronomy 18.21, Moses said to the Israelites, you may say to yourself, how can we know when a message has not been spoken from the Lord? And he answers in verse 22 saying, if what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message that the Lord has not spoken. You know, the Bible takes the guesswork out of the equation by having an intimate relationship with God and his word and listening to the voice of the spirit, we can be confident in the knowing that what we are hearing aligns with what God says in the Bible. You'll be able to say, I recognize that. God's done that before. It's in his word and he's calling me to join him. Or the opposite, right? I don't recognize that. God's not done that before. It's not in his word, and yet the world is calling me to join them in that. And taking a stand against that, being set apart for God, and digging in so that you can know the truth of what God is telling us. Throughout the entire Bible, there are countless examples of men and women who God invited to join him in order that his eternal purpose and plan would be accomplished through them for the glory of his name. And you know what? God still uses us today. I want to be named as one who is faithful to his call. I want to be next. Don't you? Don't you want to be next? So in our study, we've been looking a little bit at the life of Moses. Moses is one whom God called to join him in carrying out his eternal purpose and plan, a plan that would rescue God's people out of slavery from Egypt and deliver them into their inheritance in the promised land of Canaan. But you know what? Long before God began, be, um, pro- called Moses to join him, he was already at work in his life. He watched over him. He rescued him. He protected him. He was raising Moses up to be ready from the very beginning. Did you know that God raises us up to be ready? He's raising you up right now for something that he has prepared in you. He's developing your character. He's calling you in the raising up. And back to the word, in the same way, God was also watching over the Israelites. He knew intimately their rhythms of life, their comings and their goings. He saw their oppression and he heard their cry. And in the fullness of God's timing by way of a burning bush, God appointed Moses to join him in accomplishing his eternal purpose and his plan for the Israelites. At first, Moses kind of argued with God, didn't he? He said, My, me, God? I can't do this. I can't even talk. Why me? Why don't you choose somebody else? I know. How about Aaron? Take him. He will do a better job. And Moses was right. In his own ability, he could not do anything that God was calling him to do. But God wasn't asking Moses to do it in his own ability. He was commissioning him to do God's will by God's very own ability. He was asking him to do it through him. Psalm 103 verse 14 says, He knows our frame. He is mindful that we are dust. In other words, God knows our frailty. He knows our human weakness, and yet he knows what's possible in us and through us by the way of a life fully committed to his will and his ways. So Moses did accept God's call, and he joined him in the work. And the book of Exodus gives us a powerful picture of how the Lord worked mightily through Moses, through signs and wonders, through miracles, through the Ten Commandments, and even the splitting of a sea. 
all for the purpose of rescuing his chosen people out of slavery and leading them into the promised land. So with a life dedicated to the Lord, Moses walked faithfully with God, leading the Israelites for 40 years as they wandered about that wilderness. And yet in Numbers and then in Deuteronomy, we see that God's purpose for Moses was going to be complete before entering the promised land. At the very end of his life, God took Moses up high on a hill and he showed him the whole land of Canaan, the whole promised land, the inheritance that he would see. But he only let him see it with his eyes. And then on that very hill, he died. And he was remembered as Moses, the servant of the Lord, because he was faithful to God's call, whatever that looked like. He didn't understand when he was called what God was calling him into. He didn't know how long it would be. I'm sure he didn't know that it wasn't going to be all the way into the promised land. But a powerful revelation that the Spirit spoke in my preparation for us tonight was in Moses' response to the Lord's decision that he would not be the one that would lead the people into the promised land, that he would only see it from a distance. His response clearly spoke of Moses' heart and God's people. Moses' response, even in the knowing months before that he would not be crossing over into the promised land, is really an example for us to live our lives by. He didn't get offended. He didn't complain or grumble. He didn't have an attitude that said, why not me, God? You anointed me. How come I can't go all the way into the promised land? He didn't try to change God's mind or reason with him. Instead, Moses' response was this. In Numbers 27, verses 15 to 17, it says, May the Lord, the God who gives breath to all living things, appoint someone over this community to go out and to come in before them, who will lead them out and who will bring them in. So the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. You see, Moses' immediate response was to ask God for someone to watch over them, to lead them in their comings and their goings, so that they would not be left to wander another 40 years in the wilderness. Moses realized and he reminded God of their need for a shepherd. And God was faithful. You see, long before Moses' death, God, by way of his providential plan, was raising up another to be ready. He was raising up another to join him in the leading and the watching over of his people. Joshua would ultimately be the one who God anointed and who had worked through to carry out his promise of deliverance. He would be the one that would lead the Israelites across the Jordan and into their inheritance, their promised land. But here is the truth. Both of these men were raised up by God to know him, to watch him, to follow him, to trust him. Both of these men had a calling on their lives. Both of these men were chosen by God in order that his eternal purpose and plan would be accomplished through them. Both of these men laid down their lives, their own abilities, their own plans, and they accepted God's call and his promise that he would give them everything they needed to accomplish his purposes through them. There was not one that was better or another. God just had a purpose for one and a purpose for the other. Just like our purpose might be different than another, it doesn't mean that our purpose is better than the other. God's just calling us to different things, right? And we have a calling on our lives, ladies, a calling to, by God to join him in accomplishing his plan for his glory and his honor of his name. You see, the day that you accepted Christ as your Savior, he called you. God began a work in you as his body, as his daughter, as his hands and feet. And this calling is to go where he calls you to go, to join him where he calls you to join him. This calling is specifically designed for you. 
I want to say that again. This calling is designed specifically for you. Don't think for a minute that this calling is only for the one next to you or on the other side next to you, or for me, or for Pastor Charlene, or your Connect leader, this calling is for you. You know why? Because you were created specifically for what the world needed. Your design is what the world needs. Your neighbor needs you. Your friend needs you. Your coworker needs you. Your husband needs you. Your connect group needs you. I need you. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. When God formed you, he prepared these beautiful things in advance, and they were specifically for you. He wove them into your innermost being. And the moment you accepted Christ, there was a party in heaven. The angels were proclaiming, God was proclaiming, yes, I have all these things just waiting for her, already prepared for her. And now is the fullness of my time. Now is my time for her. Oh, how she needed you, Jesus. She just needed you as her savior. She needed a shepherd to watch her comings and her goings, a spirit to walk with her, to guide her and to teach her. You see, nothing is random. Nothing is by chance. Nothing is happenstance. Rather, everything is by God's divine providence. Every place, every position, every person, every circumstance, every opportunity, all of these have been carefully orchestrated by God to accomplish his purposes in you for the glory of his name. Hallelujah. Right? So when God calls us to join him, he's looking for our response to be wholehearted trust and quick obedience. But I haven't always been the best at that, have you? That word obedience just made me, I don't know. (laughs) I don't really like that word too much. And God is working in me on that. But I ask you, have there been times in your life like mine when fear has kept you from his calling? Or have there been times when it's really been hard to discern, is that God's voice? Is that really him calling me? Or perhaps you've thought that God was mistaken and this invitation must be for somebody else. And this is the one I find myself struggling with most frequently. Have there been times in your life that your plans are already set in place? You wake up in the morning and you know you're going to do this and you're going to do that. and You're going to see this person. You're going to have coffee with this person. You're going to eat this for dinner. And then God interrupts your life. And he's like, not quite, honey. That's not what it's going to be like today. God asks you to join him in a different way, a different place, with a different person. And in my humanness, my initial response is, really, God? I don't think that's the right time. I don't think that's the right place. I tell you what, I have my plan set in place for today. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do this, and I'm ready to join you there. So whatever you want me to do, it, you just show me who and where and what, and I am your girl. Yeah. And, and God's like, oh, honey, that's not really the way it is. But in all of our questionings, in all of these things, if, if your spirit resonated with any of those things, God is a gentle God. In all of those ways, he pulls us close and he reminds us, my dear daughter, in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, my plans are not your plans, nor are my ways your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my plans than your plans. But you know what? There have been times in my life that my hand has been so gripped so tightly around my own plans that I don't want to give it up. Have you ever felt like that? Around my own expectations and control, around my thoughts and my actions, around my health and my family, even around my greatest hopes gripped tightly, all of which when I hold too tightly, 
and trust in my own way, in my own abilities. They don't allow me to open my hands and release them into God's hands so he can carry them, so he can be my all in all. What I find is when I pry my hands free, I'm able to open my hands to receive all that God has planned for me. Because if they're closed, you can't receive. So you have to open your hands to receive. So in my life, God has shown me over and over again that his ways are higher than my ways. His plans are higher than my plans. And I'm beginning to realize that I want to be a woman who is so confident in God's ways, in his higher ways, in his higher plans, that I don't get upset anymore when my things don't go my way. I'm not saying that never happens because I'm still human and I still have to check my spirit with his spirit. But that's my desire. God, just use me where you'll have me. Open my hands to receive what you have for me. Don't, help, don't let me grip my control. Let me release so I want to share a couple of examples with you tonight that I have titled A Series of Rerouted Plans. And this really happened over a series of about three years, really starting with 2020. Um, I'm not going to share all of them, but I want to give you a little bit of history so you have some context. So in 2004, I accepted the call to um, be a short-term missionary in a remote village in, um, um, it was a Mayan village in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. And so from 2004 to 2015, officially, um, I led many teams to this village to serve in many different ways. And I would have to say that my greatest joy is I did that as my kids were growing, and it was such a blessing to watch my kids grow, their faith grow in that. God was watching over them as all of that were, was happening, and most of them were able at one point or another to join me on a trip, and um, it, it was a beautiful season in my life. I'm so thankful to God for it. In 2008, we sponsored a local Mayan pastor and his family. He had three children to come into the village and be full-time um, missionaries in the village. They planted a church, and we supported them in that church. Their second daughter, um, well, their first daughter, second child, was Adelai. And Adelai was born um, with serious, serious illnesses, and she remained sick most of her life. She was an incredibly bright child of Jesus, a testimony to all who came in contact with her. Um, just the Spirit of God is radiated from her. So now that's history. We'll come back up to the current. So February 2021, my husband and I were asked to come back to that village to help with Adelaide's quinceanera party, which is her 15th year birthday, which is a big thing in Mexico. And it was even bigger for Adelaide at that time and for, for us to give that to her because she was currently in kidney failure. And they didn't know how long Adelaide was going to make it. And so I was planning on going there to help with the decorations or whatever way I could serve. Heartbreakingly, the pandemic made it impossible for us to travel internationally, and so we were not able to go to Mexico. Um, and somehow, because international travel was not possible, we ended up in Wisconsin. I don't know how we ended up there, but God. That's all I can say is God. So... God, when I look back, so often we can't see the way that God was working unless we look back. And when I look back, I know that God was working and that he was watching over everything. Because here we are in Wisconsin, snowshoeing instead of snorkeling, which, yeah. But I walked into a little flower shop in Monroe, Wisconsin, and talked to the um, shop owner as I was doing a little purchase and got, came to realize that her husband was raised one street over from me in Alger Heights in Grand Rapids. So we were in Wisconsin and her husband was raised one street over from me. And then we began talking to her more and realized that this young couple had a house church at that time and their heart's desire was to plant 
a small church in their community and they had no idea what they were doing. They had no idea what their next steps were, but God did. Because the next day we were able to take them out for lunch and pray with them and encourage them and give them some guidance. See, we were part of the church planning team in Sparta and we were currently doing that right at that time. And it was just a beautiful bridge how God designed that. And then, you know what, the ladies in Mexico, because we were not able to go, God was working over and raising them up already. They gave her a beautiful 15th birthday party in ways that I would never have been able to do because it was so unique to the church and blessed them. God's ways higher than my ways. God's plans higher than my plans. So this month, February 2023, For about a year now, I have poured over plans to go to Peru, my husband and I, and our youngest son, who now lives in California. Well, in December, civil unrest broke out in Peru, and it is just way too dangerous to go there. So about a month ago, our plans completely changed again, and guess where we're going? Mexico. (laughs) We're going back to Mexico. And you know what? God was already working and watching He knew that we needed to be there because just four short months ago, Adelai passed away. At 17 years of age, from kidney failure, she died. And the church is heartbroken. Her parents are heartbroken. We're heartbroken over this loss. It's incredible. But God said, you can go there. You go back. I'm calling you back. And so we're going for our vacation there and we're going to go for a couple of days to the village and just spend time encouraging them, praying with them, lifting them up so that they can continue on with their call. God's ways higher than my ways. Our plans, his plans higher than mine. You see, from a human-centered perspective, I can honestly say when I looked at that trip, I didn't want to be in Wisconsin. I wanted to be serving God in Mexico. Not in the cold. And all the time that I have planned, pouring over these plans for Peru, it would all seem like a lot of wasted time. But it's not. Because I know that we serve a faithful God whose plans are higher than my plans and ways are higher. And he has such incredible things planned for us and planned for the people as we step on that plane to Yucatan in just 12 days from now. You see, from a God-centered perspective, I see God's provision all over it, God's miracle all over it, his protection, his purpose, his ways higher. Ladies, God is calling us to release our grip, to lay down our will and our plans and surrender to him, to trust that his way is higher. He's calling us to have a heart that is soft and yielded, to have watchful eyes that see the unseen and listening ears that hear the unheard, to trust in the fullness of his name or his time, to be full of his word and full of his spirit in a way that becomes a beautiful dance of worship. So let us remember the beautiful truth that we serve a faithful God who knows intimately our life's rhythms We have a Father who watches over our comings and our goings. And we can trust in Him in that whatever He's calling us to will be accomplished in His ability and not in our own. We can trust in the promise that He's raising us up right now to be ready. Hebrews 13, 21 says, May he equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.